Shadow Warrior 3 is an upcoming first-person shooter video game that is being developed by Flying Wild Hog and published by Devolver Digital. The game is the follow-up to 2016's Shadow Warrior 2, and the newest entry seems to be taking the franchise in a new direction. Let's break down the teasers, story, and interviews around the title. As always, all the sources will be linked in the description below, so make sure to check those out and support those original articles. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Fonked2 for video updates. And with that out of the way, let's get into everything we know about Shadow Warrior 3. Let's start by discussing the ending of Shadow Warrior 2, which is something I still don't know if I understand completely. I will be discussing spoilers for Shadow Warrior 2, so if you haven't played the game yet, or made it to the ending of the game, click off this video now. If you're still here, let's really focus on the last 30 seconds of the game, which ends with Kamiko entering her dragon form and potentially eating or killing Lo Wang before the game cuts to black which leads a big question moving forward with the series if the protagonist would change, and how the developers would explain what happened to the player moving forward. It overall was a very strange ending for the title, and the community was split on how it was received. The game designer on the project, Powell Kowaleski, did an interview with PC Games N to promote Shadow Warrior 3 and discuss the ending of the second game. PC Games asked, quote, When we left Lo Wang last time, he was being swallowed by a dragon that flew out of the shattered gates of a soul well. How do things start off in Shadow Warrior 3? Powell responded saying, quote, Well, to be accurate, Shadow Warrior 2 ended with a cut to black. The moment the dragon was about to attack. So we can't be 100% sure that Lo Wang was in fact swallowed by the creature, right? Shadow Warrior 3 will certainly answer that question. The story takes place sometime after the events of the previous game, enough time for Lo Wang to grow his hair back. The dragon that was released from its eternal prison is now enraged and his presence in our world threatens all of existence. Lo Wang and his former enemy turned ally Orochi Zilla embark on a quest in search of means that will help send this world destroying creature back to where it came from. And this answers a few questions, one being that Lo Wang has somehow managed to survive the encounter with the dragon, and this game will still be a chronological sequel, the story will also be a direct continuation of the second game, and the dragon will be returning as the main villain. I will return to this article a little bit later, but for now that sets the stage enough for Shadow Warrior 3 and what you will need to know moving forward about the game. Next, we can move to July of 2020 when Devolver Digital, the publisher of Shadow Warrior 3, released the first teaser trailer for the game. The trailer showed off the new grappling hook mechanic the team has added, and this trailer was meant to hype up the gameplay reveal, which was set to be released less than a week after the teaser trailer. The trailer also said the game would be released sometime in 2021. The official website at the same day was updated as well and gave the first description of the story. It said, quote, Shadow Warrior 3 launches the offbeat first-person shooter series to the next level with a seamless blend of fast-paced gunplay, razor-sharp melee combat, and a spectacular free-running movement system. Fallen corporate shogun Lo Wang and his former employer turned nemesis turned sidekick Orochi Zilla embark on an improbable mission to recapture an ancient dragon they unwillingly unleashed from its eternal prison. Armed with a punishing mix of blades and bullets, Lo Wang must traverse uncharted parts of the world to track down the dark beast and push the apocalypse back yet again. All it will take is the mask of a dead god, a dragon's egg, a touch of magic, and enough firepower to hold off an impending cataclysm. And this lines up with what we've heard the story would entail, Lo Wang will be working to recapture the dragon they accidentally released in the second game. And it also teases what we will see in the story, a dragon's egg, a dead god mask, and a touch of magic. How this will all play together, we'll just have to wait and see. Then later in July, the gameplay segment was released for the game, which looked similar to how the second game was played, but this time there seemed to be a bigger focus on comedy, verticality, and an interactive world. Lo Wang has a lot of voice lines depending on what is happening in the game and what the player is interacting with. Also, in the gameplay slice we see, there's a good amount of platforming with the grappling hook and it can be used to either help movement or attack enemies. 
The demo also showed the grappling hook destroying platforms enemies were standing on to drop them off the edge, and I would highly recommend anyone who is interested in this game to watch the entire gameplay slice. There is too much to cover here, but it looks like the team is doubling down on what fans liked about the second game, and also changing some of the mechanics and story beats fans didn't like. Following the teaser trailer and gameplay, the team went on an interview run with lots of games media to tease what fans can expect from the game. The first interview I want to discuss comes from IGN. The team was adamant on stating this game would return to the roots of the series, and the game designer Powell said again, quote, For Shadow Warrior 3, we wanted to go back to our roots and make a game that's focused on a linear single player campaign that's filled with over the top action from the opening credits. He continued on saying, quote, We added this whole backstory to Lo Wang to modernize him. He likes video games, comic books, American films, and we wanted to shift the humor towards these things. And right away, this sounds great. Going back to the roots of the series has usually not been a big problem for a lot of these games that try to reinvent themselves. And I think focusing on a linear campaign rather than a pseudo open world could also really help this property. The team also discussed the engine change. For the third game, the team switched to Unreal Engine 4 rather than using a custom in-house engine for the previous games. They said, quote, It is a change for us, but it's a change for the better. Working with Unreal speeds up the development process. The engine is very user-friendly. We are achieving the same goals in less time. For players, you'll instantly notice how pretty Shadow Warrior 3 is, from lighting to textures to the amount of on-screen gore flying around at once without performance suffering. And that also sounds great. It could mean that we could see more DLC for the game if the development speed has increased, or just less time between the mainline entries especially if this game does end up releasing on the new current generation of consoles, so the PS5 and Xbox Series X, we could potentially see Shadow Warrior 3 and Shadow Warrior 4 all on the same console generation. The next interview I want to discuss comes from PC Gamer and was also in July of 2020. When asked about character progression and how the team is going back to their roots, Powell said, quote, it's going to have much simpler character progression. We don't want to draw the player's attention away from the action. We don't want anyone standing in place for 5 minutes wondering what upgrade they should put on their weapon to increase some stat for whatever percent. We are going back to the first Shadow Warrior, but we are upgrading everything. Powell then continued on and discussed areas and verticality in this new world and said, We've improved the movement of our character, and that allowed us to build bigger and more vertical arenas. But then we thought, now we have to fill them with combat. We want more than generic explosive barrels, we want devices that are connected permanently to an arena that you can interact with in different ways. We are thinking about approaching encounters from different angles. The next question actually had to do with weapons. The team said they would be including less weapons in the third game compared to the second, which had 73 weapons, and the team said instead they were focusing their efforts on around 8 weapons, which would be the permanent weapons that players would carry around through the entire campaign, but that said, they promised the weapons they were including would be fully polished, and also this number most likely doesn't include the specialty limited weapons we have seen in the gameplay or trailer either, like the firework gun we see the player use after defeating an enemy, so there will most likely be more than 8 weapons, but the team is saving some of the more special weapons for limited times and special events, and you won't be able to carry them throughout the entire campaign. The next interview I want to discuss is us going back to PC Games N, which I said we would be returning to. Additional clarification was given on the weapon system in the title. They said, although there will be less weapons in game and toned down RPG systems, there will still be an upgrade system for equipment, but in a much simpler form. So it will be there for players who want it, but it shouldn't slow down the gameplay too much. And the final thing the team said about combat is they wanted to include a bigger focus on melee combat, and have now given the katana its own dedicated attack button, which allows for more seamless combat systems that blend ranged and melee combat. And it seems like a very cool and much needed change, especially with all the extra mobility, the katana should be a lot more viable. The interview continued on, and they did confirm that the game will be completely single player compared to some of the previous games. 
And the final interview I want to discuss comes from Gaming Bolt. The team discussed the new mechanic that performing an execution on an enemy will temporarily give the player an ability from the enemy that was executed. And the abilities will vary depending on the enemy killed. The team said, quote, Executions are the cherry on top of our combat system, because it's not just a fancy finishing animation. It also adds another layer of strategy when dealing with hordes of demons rushing at you. Every enemy is unique and possesses some kind of important trait. It could be a weapon or offensive slash defensive power that the enemy is casting. The idea is these abilities are closely tied to a particular enemy's visual design and behavior in combat, so that even before finishing a new enemy type for the first time, Lo Wang should be able to predict what kind of unique ability he will acquire upon execution. These enemy inherited abilities are powerful and usually do things that weapons from the standard arsenal cannot, expanding combat efficiency. Later in the second game, when you've already seen most of the enemies, performing executions is also part of split-second decision-making, as it's not only about finishing off enemies whenever you have an opportunity to do so, but also which enemy is the ripest power source to mine in order to dispatch the rest. And when asked about how long the title would be, the team said, quote, It's difficult to talk about overall playtime at this point, as we still have a good amount of development time ahead of us. What we can say for now is that we've learned a few lessons from our previous games, realizing that sometimes less is more. With that approach in mind, we decided to focus more on density rather than longevity. So what you can expect from Shadow Warrior 3 is a campaign where every minute counts and every element of the game, whether it's combat, traversal, or narrative, supports our goal of delivering one consistent package focused on providing one of an adventure. And once again, I tend to agree with this approach that creating a tighter and traditionally smaller game tends to pay off, and it sounds like for this type of project, they're going back to their roots, and it will be more of a game like Doom or Duke Nukem, rather than some of the previous games where they tried to do a lot of things and missed on some of them. So what should we expect from the title? The team has said that although they are currently focused on the PC version of the game, in 2021 they would love to bring the title to additional platforms as well. And fans should anticipate further announcements in 2021. The studio itself, Flying Wild Hog, was acquired by THQ Nordic's parent company Embracer Group in November of 2020, but it doesn't seem like this purchase will change the deals that were already in place. So it still seems like Shadow Warrior 3 will be published by Devolver Digital rather than THQ Nordic. And nothing should change with the release date. Hopefully COVID hasn't impacted the game's development too much and the marketing picks back up again for the title early in 2021. And then we can expect a release mid to late 2021. And for the most part, that is everything we know about Shadow Warrior 3 and where I'm going to end this video. Make sure to like and share, subscribe for weekly gaming news, and I will see you guys in the next one.